Bueno, aquí les presentamos a la muñeca de Betty que se la regalaron sus 15 años. ¡Ay, no manches, mira! The Haunted Doll I swear that this story, although it sounds like it's made up, it's 100% true, and it still terrifies me. When I was a kid, I would spend a lot of time in Texas with my brother, dad, and stepmom. Mainly just my brother and stepmom, because my dad was in the military and would frequently go on long trips, leaving us alone in whatever house we happened to be living in at the time. When I was about five, we moved to a large, very old Victorian house. Three stories, not including the attic and the basement. Lots of rooms, and as a little kid, I found it very fun to explore the house. In the attic, there was lots of old junk that the owner of the house was storing while we were renting it, including a huge collection of beautiful, handcrafted porcelain dolls. There were hundreds of them, lined up neatly on the back wall in a glass case, standing on their stands like an army ready for command. And as a little girl who loved ribbons and bows and anything girly, I was entranced. One doll in particular stood out to me, a beautiful, red hair, green eyed doll in a blue silk dress with a matching ribbon in her hair. I begged my dad to let me play with her. I felt the need to hold and love her and have tea parties with her. He of course refused, telling me that the dolls were worth more than I could imagine and he wanted his deposit back when we moved. He kept the door locked for good measure, after catching me more than once staring in awe at the doll. A month went by, and I had all but forgotten about the doll, choosing to simply explore the house and play my basement room with my babies. Until one day, when I came home from dropping my dad off at the base and found the red-haired doll sitting on my bed. I was ecstatic, thinking that my dad had given me the doll and left it as a surprise, and proceeded to play with the doll every second of every day until my dad came home. As soon as my dad saw the doll, he flipped out and yelled at me, spanked me and took the doll away to lock back up in the attic, and only got more aggravated when he discovered that the attic door was still locked as he was the only one to have the key. He couldn't figure out how I could have possibly picked the lock. His only solution was that I must have convinced my brother to do it for me. Another month went by, and my dad installed another lock on the attic, warning me and my brother what would happen if he found out we'd been down there again. That very night, when we returned home, the doll sat on my bed again, leaving me wary of its presence. Something that had once made me so happy, now made me cautious and anxious. I told my stepmom, who immediately became angry and slapped me. She then slapped my brother and tried to return the doll, only to find the attic door once again locked. She tore the house apart trying to find the keys. She was positive we had hidden it until giving up and locking the doll in her room. The night my dad came home, I was terrified and he wouldn't speak to me or my brother at all, only giving us a short speech about how we needed to go to our rooms and not come out. The next trip he made, we didn't see him off to the base. We sat in our rooms and had a quiet evening alone. I spent the night sulking and trying to figure out how the doll had gotten into my room. Later that night, after I'd fallen asleep, 
I heard soft music that slowly woke me up. I felt something near my feet, and thinking it was my cat, I reached down, only to find instead of fur, a handful of hair. I turned my light on and screamed. What looked like every doll from their attic was in my room, sitting at my tea table, in my dollhouse, and positioned in standing position on my bed and in various parts of my room. My door slammed open and my dad appeared in the doorway where he'd apparently been waiting for me to head to the attic to claim the doll. He took one look at them, grabbed me, and ran out of the house, dragging my brother and stepmom along with us. He refuses to speak of it to this day. The most important part of this story is the backstory of the red-haired doll. Apparently, the original owner and builder of the house had a daughter who died when she was about eight years old, and it was customary to make a doll of their likeness, made out of their real hair, and dressed in the same clothes the child wore. I think it was that little girl, because I never felt like it was dangerous to play with the doll. I felt like she was lonely, and trying to make a friend.